Hello, I'm Andrew Jupin. Eric Siska. Steven Sadak. And we hate movies. Hate movies on the Sideshow Network. Thank you for tuning in. As always, welcome to the final episode of the latest installment of Listener Request Month. Uh, this request comes in from Connor, all the way from Syracuse, which is in western New York. If anyone's keeping score, get out a map. <laughs> you might as well learn something while you're listening to this. You're not going to listen, uh, learn anything from this episode. Uh, this is what he had to say. Hey, this is Connor calling from Syracuse, New York. I'm calling for listener request month. I would like to place a request for The Devil's Advocate, 1997, starring Al Pacino and Keanu Reeves. Uh, I think it would be a fun word to talk about. You have Keanu trying to do a southern accent, um, Al Pacino totally off the hook, and a pre the troubles Jeffrey Jones. So, uh, yeah, love the show, and I think that would be a good episode. Thanks. So The Devil's Advocate, 1997, Directed by Taylor Hackford. That's an unfortunate name for a film director. If I can make a cheap joke for a second. He he got through it. He made that shittyish Ray movie, which is fine. It's a shittyish uh, movie. Yeah, yeah that's, shittyish. that's true. This is kind of shittyish, too. Like, it's just on the edge of mediocrity and, like, almost good. But I'll tell you what. If you asked Andrew and Steve, and I don't know about young Eric, about uh, this movie in, like, circa 98... We'd tell you it's the greatest fucking thing we'd ever seen. Oh, my God. This movie, you guys. (laughs) Yeah. How many times have you guys seen this movie? Five to six. Yeah, probably. Yeah, over the years. Because I definitely saw it in theaters, and I was like, whoa, man. This is an Oscar caliber everything. (laughs) I did not see it in theaters. It was a rental. It was an old old VHS rental from Mm. the grocery store. But... uh, I loved this movie. I thought it was on par with The Godfather when it came out. Like it was just like that, like <laughs> super on prestige. Par with the is Godfather. that because of P- the Pacino connection? Yeah, I was like, this is the best thing. He's. I mean, like, I didn't know shit about shit, but I was like, yeah, this yeah. is like a prestige picture that is gonna last forever because it's a classic, right? Yeah, of it, course. For some reason, well, there's definitely that scene, like kind of towards the end of the movie, where you get Al Pacino doing a little soft shoe in a church. Yeah, and I was just thinking about shitty old Godfather three, and I was like, I wish I was watching that. I wished I was watching Godfather three over this movie. Well, now, right now, now, not back then. No, no, back, back then, then you were, oh. I was like, this, this is, it's the greatest thing ever. It combines. Like Steve said, Oscar caliber performances with like my favorite genre, horror. This is like a pseudo horror movie. This is like a Spike TV masterpiece. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I could see this playing on their schedule. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is Spike TV still around? Oh, yeah. I, I haven't had I've... cable in like five years, but are people still giving a fuck about Spike I... TV? Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Internet, but I believe they have <laughs> the uh, Jimmy Fallon rap Wait, no. Oh, lip, lip sync, sync battle? Battles? Oh, okay. So that's uh, cha-ching right there. <laughs> that's uh, another thing keeping me away from Spike TV, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, so, Steve, we've all seen this movie a bunch. Can you boil down what this movie is? It's like a morality tale meets John Grisham meets Rosemary's Baby-ish horror. I mean, it's basically Keanu Reeves is a... Hotshot Florida lawyer who gets an opportunity to join a big shot, big time uh, New York firm in the big city uh, run by the devil. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Uh, Don't you hate that when you start a new job and it's surprisingly <laughs> run by the devil? <laughs> and it's more than you think. <laughs> and <laughs> hilarity ensues for about two and a half hours. Dude, two hours and 24 minutes. I started oh, tweeting that God. all these people were trying to guess, like, from the runtime what the movie was. Yeah, it's longer than Star Wars. Oh, yeah. It's a solid 20 minutes longer than Star Wars. Is it Wars. the longest movie you've ever done? I think it might be. I really do. I know that, like, the juror, like, is, like, 210 maybe or 205. The Conqueror is kind of a long movie, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I, I, I don't mean, know. Either way, this is where you feel it the most. 
this yeah. movie. I mean, I couldn't believe it. The final scene of this movie lasts in itself about 25 minutes. I can't believe they allowed this cut to be theatrically released. And it's one of those things where you look at that, like you start it up and you're like, I must have accidentally bought the extended edition. Mm-hmm. And then you look on IMDb and it's like theatrical cut 224. Fucking kill me. <laughs> yeah, I know. What am I uh, watching? One of those you know, Marvel monster movies. No, I thought I was watching a law movie with the devil. (laughs) That should be 90 minutes. Exactly. And like, spoiler alert at the end, he's the devil. I was like, Oh shit. And credits like, that's it. Dude. The fact that this movie makes such a to do (laughs) at the end about revealing that Al Pacino is the devil. Fucking suck it. The movie's called the devil's advocate. Look at the poster. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just, do yourself a favor and look at the poster. And he's been hoo-ha in the whole movie. <laughs> oh, this is this is like a level 11 hoo-ha alert. <laughs> he's tap dancing through this whole fucking thing. He's reading people's minds and replying in other languages. There's so <laughs> many devil probably. I'm going to jump ahead to the end of the movie because you said level 11. And it never happened before or since that Al Pacino pulls a Daniel LaRusso in this movie. <laughs> because Keanu Reeves is like, Did you fuck my wife? And he's like, yeah, on a scale of one to ten, one being the most you know, a, a vanilla run of the mill romp and 10 being the most uh, s- absurd sexual experience you can ever imagine. It was an 11. Was- and I'm like, that's Daniel Russo talking about the mac and cheese in <laughs> Karate Kid Part 3. He's like, hey, what do you think of the macaroni and cheese? And he's like, on a scale of 1 to 10, I give it an 11. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, a man, borderline stealing- 11. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that sex was. <laughs> Go back and listen to whatever that was. Gone Ep- fishing. Gone I fishing think. episode eleven. Or, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Oh yeah. Holy shit. So by the way, we start this movie off. Keanu Reeves is defending a child molester. Uh, played by noted pervert looking guy Chris Bauer. From True Blood. He was on the wire playing uh noted loser Frank Sabatka. He plays a uh he plays sex machine in the stay tuned to come eight millimeter. Ooh. Oh, I thought I was like, wait a minute, sex machine? You mean uh, what's his face from Dust Till, Dust Till Dawn? Dawn? Yeah. Oh no, I think it's maybe he's just called the machine or something. Oh, oh that because wow. sex machine is uh, what's yeah. his face? Uh, Tom Savini. Yeah, come on, sex machine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, he's he's played a pervert a bunch of times. He's got pervert face. <laughs> yeah, he, no, does. he does. Yeah. And he's like a you know he's a chubby bald fella. Mm. He's like if George Costanza really fell out of society. <laughs> And so you, that's why. So you realize instantly, like Keanu Reeves is a is a defense attorney that is just you know defending the lowest of the low, and he's got a perfect record. Yes, and uh, on the stand is Heather Matarazzo of uh, Todd Solon's fame. I think that was kind of a little bit, bit of typecasting. Is like we got a little bit of racy material. Any any fourteen year old up for it? You yeah. Know what yeah. I mean? Do we have a young looking girl who's mature enough that she can say this twisted shit? <laughs> oh, get the girl from Welcome to the Dollhouse. She'll do it. She'll say anything. Was she in, um, oh, no, that I'm thinking of Selma Blair that was in uh, Cruel Intentions. Yes. She'll do some weird shit, too. Sure. <laughs> well, she's, she's a bit older, though, right? Well, th- they're both older now. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's We're, uh, Eric, this movie was made in 1997. Oh. We're almost, guys, we are on the cusp of the Devil's Advocate's 20th anniversary, if you can believe it. <sighs> Is there going to be a... Th- Theatrical re-release? <laughs> yeah, dude, I think I heard it's going to be an IMAX. I feel like they would just release like another collector's edition DVD of this movie. <laughs> oh, it's like, not even getting high down? No, it's just another platinum collector's edition. <laughs> oh, the platinum <laughs> Oh, yeah, those edition. are really good. That was a thing. Those That existed. Oh, yeah. But no one ever thought those were actually like collector's items, right? No, but like if you... I remember two specifically... Blow, the Johnny mm. Depp movie. They released that thing seven times on DVD. Yeah, I had the Platinum Collection. Oh, cool. And there was also, I believe, <laughs> uh, one of them dumbass Austin Powers movies. I think it was the second one, Spy Who Shagged Me. Yeah. Was also oh, like yeah, you a, want that in the Platinum. You yeah, you want to preserve that piece of shit. That's another movie I've seen about 27 times. 
So um, as Heather Matarazzo is going through this really uncomfortable uh, description of like being molested by a teacher, by a teacher, uh, you know, uh, Keanu's getting his game face on. He's trying to think about what he's going to say next. And he looks over at Chris Bauer, who's jerking off. Dude, this man is rubbing one out in the courtroom. (laughs) And like he's like fingering the table. It's disgusting. Right. Yeah. Do you think the table fingering was all Chris Bauer's (laughs) suggestion? He's like, hey, Taylor, what if I did this to the table? (laughs) Guys, I'm doing it in real life. Well, no, that's FYI. it's showing sympathy for this character, right? Because he's it's a compulsion. He can't yeah. help himself. He yeah. just, it's not like he's thinking I'm going to do the wrong thing. Oh, it's, man. Can't <laughs> stop. This man should be put in the trunk of a car and the car should be driven off a cliff. Well, that's kind of the one thing about this movie. This movie's a very long belated lawyer joke, you know what I mean, or belabored, I should say. Yeah. And it kind of just doesn't allow for the other half of our legal system to exist. It's like, those fucking scum-sucking defense attorneys, they're all working for the devil. And no, it's the, like, well, not really. Yeah. Everyone's entitled to a defense. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, as, when, I, when I was younger, too, I thought, like, the title was cool and mm-hmm. all that. But but let me play devil's advocate. Like, oh, God, it, it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Even the title. Oh, the title's really stupid. Don't worry about it. But yeah, it did. It grabbed me, dude. I was in that grocery store video section like, (gasps) get the fuck out of here. Al Pacino and Keanu Reeves in the same movie. Like, this was my heat. (laughs) Heat had already come out, but this was my heat. I was like, the dude from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Speed together with the Godfather. (laughs) Fucking finally. (laughs) Yeah, who cares about De Niro? (laughs) I mean, it was one of those things like, oh, my God, Pacino's playing the devil. Everybody come out of their house and look at this. Well, that should be, I mean, it's one of our greatest actors playing, like, yep. a, the devil. That's a great character to be sure. able to play. But, like, unfortunately, it was, like, ten years too late for Al Pacino to play oh, the yeah. devil. You know what I mean? Like, this is full-on screaming hoo-ha, hee-haw in Pacino. <laughs> and yeah, De Niro did it better with uh, Angel Heart. Oh, yeah, he's the devil in that movie, isn't he? I believe so. Yeah, yes. well, he plays Lou Cipher. Yes. Oh, yeah. that was actually... I'll be over here killing myself. It was That was one of those movies I never saw fully because it was like always on Cinemax, and I never <laughs> caught it at the beginning. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to be lost. Uh, no, I, I think I had the collector's edition. Oh, wow. Oh, you got the platinum edition? I don't know. If it, I don't think it was platinum. I think I had the regular collector's. I'm not made of platinum. <laughs> You know what's annoying about this movie is the fact that it's set in New York City. And I'll tell you why. Because when you put lawyers filming on location in New York City, I'm just thinking about Law and Order. Sure. So this movie becomes Law and Order with the devil. And the problem is we're concentrating way too much on all the fucking lawyering business and not enough about the devil. This movie is the devil without the devil. Like Al Pacino is barely in this movie. He's in, he, but no, the thing is, he's in this movie for at least 90 minutes, but there's an hour other stuff. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. First of all, if he's in this for 90 minutes, we still have another hour to go. Yeah. But also, like, he's in it as, like, this Al Pacino character. Yes. Not playing the devil, because for whatever reason, we're leaving the big reveal to the last 25 right. minutes that he's actually the devil, like... Just confirm that shit and move on. Yep. Yeah. Let's let's see a scene where he's like, you know, get out, you know, getting some acolytes going and you know, doing the whole thing. Exactly. Instead, we're left with like all of these other acolytes, like making demon faces at Charlie's Theron and all this shit. And it's like, yeah, I get it. The devil's here. Let him be the devil and dance around as the devil, not as this dude, John Milton. By the way, could we hit that nail on the head any harder? No. <laughs> no, we cannot. Short answer, no. Uh, so yeah, he like, goes to Chris Bauer and he's like, "Why don't I let you go trick off for the judge?" Which is one of our favorite <laughs> lines of the movie. Uh, in Keanu's really bad Southern accent, that oh, he's got. This thing is in and out and in and out again. One of my favorite moments of this opening thing is when he's he's like confronting this poor little girl about the the evidence against oh, her. Like, did you ever? Her. Did you ever pass notes in class? <laughs> Disgusting pig monster. Dude, so his whole defense is like, 
she made this up because he found a note where she was making fun of him. I Call- bet he eats a thousand pancakes in the morning. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I was wrong. Disgusting hog beast. <laughs> <laughs> and what's amazing is that a whole courtroom just goes. <gasps> <laughs> I know. As if a young girl calling a dude fat justifies him raping her. Well, you did say he ate a thousand pancakes. <laughs> no, that, I think it's like, oh, there's the motivation for the pretty little liar. <laughs> that, that's what did it. You know, you, you tell you. Oh, yeah. She he found that note and was upset. So then she lied. <laughs> that's like, an extreme. Like that's an extreme lie. Oh yeah, no. For and, any for a kid for to drag it to a court proceeding for a note. Then there's found? some. He's talking about some game that they used to play with, like the kids would like feel each other up called special places. Hey, do you ever play a game called special places? What was that about? Did you or did you not play a game called <laughs> special places? Was it or was it not sexual in nature? And look, I guess the fucking <laughs> prosecutor's doing bong rips because none of this is getting thrown out, and the the judge keeps going like. Ah! It, but Dude, this judge is a fan of Keanu Reeves' mm-hmm. character, Kevin whatever the fuck. Kevin Lomax. By the way, the devil's son is named fucking Kevin. <laughs> Can we all just relax? Kevin Lomax, <laughs> by the way, uh, sounds a little um, not someone who believes in the devil. It's a Jewish last name. Lomax. That's a Jewish last name. Oh. Yeah. No horns in this movie, by the way. I know. There He's got to sprout those horns, dude. Yes. He eventually. needs a fucking cape. Like, if you're being, <laughs> if you're making this silly sing song, ding dong performance yeah. as the devil, it needs to be a red cape, horns, his Oops. haircut needs to change. <laughs> he needs to be a behooven Al Pacino. Speaking of his hooves in this movie, this is a like Hollywood no no, and I can't believe it got through. Taylor Hackford must have pulled some strings. There's the scene where they're on the roof of his Al Pacino's big like yeah, yeah. penthouse office or whatever, and they're walking outside. And, and there's like that. It looks like an infinity pool. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a ridiculous. real rich douchebag kind of place. And uh, there's a shot like looking down from above, uh, and you totally see Al Pacino's shoes, and you can see the fucking heels that he's got yes. on. <laughs> yes, I I made it. I made a note about these heels because. It's goat legs, right? <laughs> he's hiding goat legs in there. Dude, he's totally hiding goat legs, but Al Pacino, the actor, is wearing lifts because he's acting up against Keanu Reeves, who oh. I'm sure is a fucking tall as a house. I mean, he is Thank a lot you. taller than him in this movie anyway. Yeah, that he is... is, but, like, don't show the heels. Nobody films the fucking apple cart that Tom Cruise stands on, but we all know it's there. <laughs> See, you know, when I I was watching this movie last night, and I was like, oh, ha, ha, clever reference, goat legs. <laughs> but then you showed me that there's a scientific explanation <laughs> for every riddle in the book. Dude, I just it's, played, it's, yeah, I it's played the scully to your molder. Just exactly. Like, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so basically, his insane defense of this child Hog mol- beast. <laughs> child molester. A thousand pancakes. <laughs> Special places. I move that she pay him ten thousand dollars <laughs> for calling him fat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, Keanu's right about that. <laughs> Good job, Kevin Lomax. Uh, <laughs> counselor, could you have your uh, your defendant pull his pants up? <laughs> Dude, him just yelling at him about that is probably my favorite scene in the whole movie, and it's five minutes into it. The important thing to hold on to in this scene or this sequence is in the middle, after the jerk off, Kevin Lomax (laughs) goes into the bathroom and he's like, oh, man, this guy's a scumbag. How do I, uh, you know, he has this moment where he, like, you know, really gets down on himself. And there's this, like, press agent who's like, can't win them all, kid. But he's also apparently friends with him because they go out after. But whatever. Sorry. He w- but that's that's like a framing device that we'll get to. Which yeah, is it's really, like he's really washing dumb. his face off in the sink. He's mm-hmm. looking in the mirror like, are you really going to do this, boy? Are you going to defend <laughs> this pig monster? He probably did eat a thousand pancakes and you know it. He diddled that girl while he ate those thousand pancakes and you're going to defend him. How do you think them girls learn special places? <laughs> Disgusting pig monster. <laughs> hey, uh, Lomax, thanks for getting me off. You want to go eat a split 2,000 pancakes <laughs> with me? 
Because I definitely need at least 1,000 pancakes. I mean, you, you heard the testimony in there. I need 1,000 pancakes. Uh, could you uh, go and have these on an entire IHOP? I mean, let's buy a franchise. You're a lawyer, right? You got money, right? So he gets him off. And- you fucking hogbees. That is way too many pancakes, hogbees. Are you out of here? I own half this eye up. <laughs> so fuck you, Lomax. Are you out of your hog beast pancake eating mine? Boy? I don't care if there's none for anyone else. I'm eating the pancakes. <laughs> Unless a girl, a young lady comes in. Uh, maybe I'll share some with her. But other than that, those pancakes are mine. You mind if I jerk off in this eye hop, by the way? It kind of, it's a two-way street. Whenever I'm eating pancakes, I got to jerk off. Oh, so uh, we celebrate, um, you know. Uh, In the weirdest way possible. Yeah, we're doing sh- shots, 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 shots. Dude, it's insane. It's like we're drinking all these shots of whiskey. It might be tequila. I mean, we're down in Florida. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? <laughs> they it's got one whiskey of the, there too. It's, well, think. it's like a it's like a weird like sort of brown liquid because it's just like bad prop stuff. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. You can't really tell what's going on. Yeah. But Are those they, pancake shots. <laughs> Are you drinking maple syrup without me? <laughs> Get out of here, hog beast! This is my celebratory tequila for getting your gross ass off. <laughs> no, that's that's the good Vermont stuff. <laughs> Hey, does this place card? Because if it does, I'm not going to stay. Because I got a couple of friends in my trunk that want to come in. God, we'll get to that yeah. stupid shit. But so, like, they're like, let's go out and celebrate your flawless victory, Kevin. And they ju- it's him, his wife was played by Charlize Theron, and this press agent yep. that harassed him in the bathroom a little while ago. And they just get wrecked. I've never seen anything like this. Dude, like, they are, the crew on yeah. SVU, like, goes out... After a victory, and you know, Ra- Raul Esparza like buys everyone a glass of wine. Ice tea's like always oh, kind of got a beer or whatever, but never anything like this. This is right. outrageous drinking. No one on on those celebratory evenings, I'm guessing, no one there is eating their wife's ass on the <laughs> dance floor because uh, Keanu. <laughs> It's a uh, nose full. Dude, he's like dancing with Charlie's there and he's like, whoops, dropped my wallet and like bends <laughs> down and starts chowing on her ass cheeks. And you're just like, dude, you're in the middle of a dance floor. I'm going to pretend your ass is a thousand pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Call me a disgusting hog beast. Do it. Call me a disgusting hog beast. See what happens. <laughs> Bet you I get real hungry. I mean, this movie is sexual in nature, I'll tell you that much. And I think, Steve, you've sort of cracked the nut as to why perverts like me and you yep. in middle school loved this movie. I'm glad you left me out of that. I liked it for the production design. I still don't know your exact track record with this movie. I believe Steve when he says he watched it as many times as he did. <laughs> you, well, no, hold on, that's just, it's too much. <laughs> I just... Did, I watched this movie because I was, like, you know, a fan of big tough guy movies, you know, and this kind of falls in that thing. But to your point, yes, this is one of the only Al Pacino movies you will see on Cinemax. <laughs> yeah, this definitely passed. This Martin, cruising. What else you got on there? <laughs> Martin. Uh, Martin Cinemax, Cinemax the third. third. That's, yeah. This You're only gonna the get the movie where Al Pacino's making his son fuck his daughter. <laughs> And that other one where he pretends to be gay, but then he might be actually gay. And he says, hips are lips. Oh, that's a real hot picture. But I don't appreciate how this movie disparages huge hog beasts like myself. (laughs) I would like you to cut one or two of those. Scent of a woman. Anybody eating ass in that movie? No? Throw it away. Hold on. I wasn't going to do this movie. But then I saw Charlize reveal herself in a church with scratches all over it. <laughs> now that's a Martin Cinemax the third Oscar caliber performance. <laughs> Any new listeners out there, this is a character we invented, I think, on Moontrap. Yeah. That is a... No, si- it's, I think earlier? it goes back older than Moontrap. Oh, no, that's just that. Is it just Moontrap mm-hmm. where we invented Martin Cinemax the third? Sure. Yeah. Wow. wow. It just it feels like he's been with us all along. Because he has. 
<laughs> it's the best trick he ever pulled. <laughs> he was with me when I was watching it on Cinemax. So, Here's the yeah, thing that he, I haven't revealed yet, by the way. I've seen this movie like 13 times. Ooh. Oh, unlucky, unlucky number. 13. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 666 would have been better. <laughs> That's way too many times to watch this movie. I, I, we might buy that furry road. What's, what's the titty situation in that film? <laughs> what's the feminist overtones? <laughs> <laughs> Just throw it in the garbage. I want good movies like The Devil's Advocate. Good. Quality Oscar caliber pictures like the Devil's Advocate and uh, Sliver. <laughs> Bring me Sliver. Whatever happened to Billy Baldwin? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> um, so he's eating his wife's asshole in the middle of a dance club. <laughs> We're having a good old blues honky tonk time. And oh, there's some fart rock going on. Oh, there's pl- plenty of it. And uh, Al Pacino's number two, who's a character that amounts to absolute zero. And what's you think that this dude is being set up for like co build? He's yeah. gonna be there when the credits hit, yep. kind of a thing. But he just disappears. So he, he offers uh, Keanu uh, a job to pick a jury because that's what he's really good at right. in New York. And he's like, what? You black guy in this bar. He does. He does have this line. Where he's like, "What? You're a black?" Yeah. He. It, what he's basically saying is like, if you're trying to put one over on me, whoever's orchestrating this, yeah. the fact that they picked a black gentleman to come give me this job offer in this like podunk Florida bar, like yeah. they picked the wrong guy to do it, bub. <laughs> <laughs> and the dude's just standing there thinking, like, you know, I'm working for the fucking devil, man. <laughs> Just take this business card and shut up. You know what? My devil deal, I still get racist shit. I sold my fucking soul to the devil. And I still have to put up with this hillbilly's crap. Great. What a great fucking America. You know what this movie picks up and drops off, like, almost instantly? Is a lot of, like, whooshing devil, like, evil sounds. Oh, my God. God, yeah. There's, like, there's one when Keanu's in the bathroom, (laughs) and it's he's at the sink, and it's, like, whoosh, and you're, like, oh, the devil? (laughs) And then there's, like, when he gets to New York, like, a bus drives by, Mm -hmm. and it's, like, whoosh, oh, the devil? (laughs) And then that's, like, kind of it. I'm driving this bus now, Kevin. (laughs) (laughs) Woo-ha! Kevin, there are two kinds of beings in this world. God and people who drive buses. (laughs) Don't you want to see yourself in the driver's seat? (laughs) Or whatever for 30 plus minutes. So it's like, you know, he's a hotshot dude. He picks this jury. He picks it over. Uh, the lawyer is the guy, one of the guys from Spaceballs, which everyone's like, oh, cool. That oh, guy. What, what guy from he's Spaceballs? He's kind of like not Jeffrey Tambor. Oh, he's Colonel Sanders. Yes, yes, yes. Are you kidding me? That's I Colonel re- Sanders? Yes. I didn't even realize that till just now. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's amazing. Wow, good pull, Sadak. Mm-hmm. And this dude's like, all right, you hot shit swamp lawyer. This is <laughs> New York City, and you think you're so great? Because Keanu Reeves is like, I want to get rid of that guy and that guy, number four. Well, he's a black gentleman, and number six, get rid of that woman. She's got an agenda. And this dude's, like, not buying it. And then it's, like, seconds later, because we see no, like, verdicts in this movie for whatever yeah, reason. No. It's just everyone's walking out of courtrooms, yeah. and it's just like, oh, here we go. He won. And trials take, apparently, like, 48 hours. Like, that's it. No, <laughs> nothing's, like, months or months or well, months. because that's how fucking good he is, dude. Yeah. He's that good at picking the jury and then, like, massaging it just right that they take no time to deliberate at all. Sure. And he comes back to the hotel, and there's Charlize, like, oh, you lost, baby? That's unfortunate. Because her accent's just as terrible as what I just did. She's okay in this. I think that she's better than him with the accent. I feel like almost, I feel like nobody's good in this. <laughs> Yeah, you're probably right. Nobody wins. Well, it's just, this character's a little bit silly because, like, this her angle in this movie is where we're ripping off Rosemary's Baby. Yes. And the whole thing is like Rosemary's Baby, again, a movie that's like two hours and 15 minutes or something like that, but you you don't feel it, first of all. But like that movie, it's like escalating. Like her paranoia slowly escalates, blah, blah, blah. Charlize hits crazy town in like 45 minutes. Well, she starts off like a, as a, like a fun, uh, like work hard, play hard kind of, 
you know, towny kind of drunk. Yeah, you know I mean, what I mean. She, like, she loves that like her husband's the all star of the Gainesville yep. legal department. They show that she's good at her job, whatever that is. It's got something to do with cars or something. And then she moves to New York and she goes baby crazy, like out of nowhere. And, and that's, because Al Pacino's not allowed to really be the devil in this movie, like you don't. It's not like justified. No. Like you know why? Yes, because he's he's you know the puppet master behind this whole thing. But like, as far as the movie functioning is concerned, like she just goes crazy in like zero to sixty, and you're like, well, this is unearned. Well, like also, there's like all these like montages of her trying to paint the apartment, and it's oh, like man the the neighbor woman who Tamara Tooney from Law and Order, right? Who's married to the guy the, that offered him the job, right? And they live next door. Mm, red flag. Don't do that. <laughs> don't live yeah. right next door to your coworkers. Don't live in the same apartment as several of your coworkers. Well, it's, it's a company building, apparently. That, it's that's a bad idea. Yep. A residential company building? <laughs> what are you doing? So, but like, they kind of start to drive her crazy. Yes. And, right. Because they're also evil demon pigs or whatever. They're but hog beasts. <laughs> they're just a bunch of pancake eating hog beasts. But like, this woman keeps making her repaint her walls like 50 <laughs> times. I would go crazy too. <laughs> Yeah, actually, you're right. If I think about that, like, that's a justifiable descent into madness. You just did a huge cross-country move, and now you had to repaint your living room 50 times? <laughs> Put a bullet in my brain. Also, hire a fucking decorator, all right, lady? Exactly. Hand it off. You got all the money in the world. Kevin well, figured it out. <laughs> well, that's Kevin a, made all that money. That's a bit of bullshit that they're just not paying attention yes. when they're making this movie. Because there's a scene... Where she's like, she is meeting with an interior decorator because they're talking about like tile for the floors or something like that. And the guy's like, oh, it's $1,300 a square or like whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. So like they do meet with somebody. There's no reason why she's actually painting this apartment. Exactly. This is like an afternoon. I mean, like it takes more than that, but like the guy will have an idea. Like, I'm doing a fucking Southwestern thing and it's going to be this, that, and the other thing. And like, yeah. You get to get your own right, trailer yeah. or whatever. And, you know, if I'm making devil money, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not picking up a brush. Exactly. The, by yeah. the way, the, my favorite slash least favorite thing in the world is there's a home improvement uh, star wipe in the middle of this movie with the paint. <laughs> and it doesn't happen ever again or before that. Dude, you said there's a there's like seven. I oh, mean, really? Did I miss it? Oh, yeah. Swooshing. It's like every time. Uh -huh. No, that's French. <laughs> What was... Uh, uh. <laughs> but, like, every time Tamara Tooney's like, I don't know about that one, it's like roller brush effect, and we, like, <laughs> here comes the next scene. Dude, oh, what's Al Borland getting into this time? <laughs> it's fucking childish. Yes. It is amateur hour. <laughs> it's such shit. I it's just... amateur two hours and 24 minutes. <laughs> Well, that's a great point, Eric. Because, like, we meet Al Pacino, and he's clearly the devil. Just and he, from Jump Street, he's the fucking devil. Also, again, because I saw the poster on the fucking box. And you saw the title of the fucking movie. <laughs> I saw the preview. I saw the whole fucking thing. I know that he's the, the devil. The previews really drove it home. Dude, the preview had him sticking his finger in the holy water and, and having bubbling. it boil. Yeah. You know who that happens to? <laughs> Only the devil. Maybe if Hitler did it. But yeah. other than him... Hitler, only the devil. And so it's very clear he's the devil. You're like, oh, maybe it's going to be a cat and mouse that he's going to try and, you know, sell his soul. Then we get the tour of the whole office and we meet everybody <laughs> from every different account. Mm -hmm. It's also, here's a question. Why is the devil so interested in the goings on of this law firm? And this is, so here's what this is. And again, it's glossed over because this script is junk town. <laughs> But there's one part where he, like, Keanu Reeves, and this is maybe, like, I don't know, four-fifths into this movie. Sure. He meets someone four from... Four-sixteenths of the movie. <laughs> he meets someone from the Justice Department. Mm -hmm. This character who lasts about 75 seconds. Mm -hmm. And the guy explains, like, all of these different, like... Uh, um, departments yeah. that Al Pacino like shows him in the beginning of the movie so it's like 
this dude works in the Middle East for this. This dude's in Asia doing this. It's all, but it's all bullshit. It's all like racist, like, I got people in the Middle East and the Bosnians are working for me too and the North Koreans. And it's like, all right. Yeah. No, the devil. Yeah. <laughs> but what he paints it as is like, these are departments of my law firm. But yeah. then this Justice Department guy is like, well, this guy's working on chemical weapons yeah. and this guy's a, a lord of war in Africa and all this shit. So it's like, they're actually not lawyers. They're like managing the world's evil. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> Under he's the, the guy. He's the syndicate. Dude. <laughs> He's the Rogue Nation syndicate. <laughs> he totally is the syndicate. Dude, imagine MI6. That's where it goes. It <laughs> turns out down the devil? Tom, I would love it. Dude, Ethan Hunt tracks down the fucking devil, dude. dude. And sidekicks him into an invisible box. <laughs> <laughs> they gas that dude in that movie. I like that. I... Well, this is another thing about yeah. the devil. The ca- and it's, it's very much the Catholic devil, right? I mean, that's the only thing that... Oh, makes 100%. Any- for some reason, this voodoo priest played by Den... There's so many like little law cases we get into, one of which being uh, Delroy Lindo. The great Delroy Lindo, who's like uncredited in like a nothing role in this movie. And it just sort of like retcons the entire voodoo religion into being like the devil's play thing or what the Catholic yeah. devil's play thing. It's the <laughs> devil's like weekend hobby. <laughs> I'll go down to my voodoo room for the afternoon. <laughs> but it, 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 I don't even understand why this case is such a, oh, like, like Kevin Lomax is just like, that case is a loser. <laughs> it's you're a gonna loser. Lo- you're going to lose that case. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a guy who slits a goat's throat in a, in a sacrifice for his religious beliefs. Um, Everyone does that. Right, yeah. that's like kosher meat. Mm-hmm. Is well, it? that's and, and yeah, it's like that's what's weird though is like it's not a loser because Kevin Lomax solves it like overnight, and it's not evil. That's the weird thing too. At the end of the movie, uh, Pacino starts like you know doing a bad summary in a paper, and he's like, and then and when you did that, he's like. Oh, and then you had the Pope and the voodoo gods and swamis all eating at the same table. I love that one, Kevin. And it's like, well, <laughs> I don't know. It's just all religions, right, dude? <laughs> but also, like, w- w- shouldn't Al Pacino be against Delroy Lindo yes. for doing harm to goats when he's got goat <laughs> legs? <laughs> you leave those goats alone, Delroy. At least the legs. I could do something with those legs. <laughs> Yep. Goat legs. <laughs> it's stupid. And then he fucking puts a voodoo curse on this guy for oh, man, no this, reason. This dude who works for like the city health department <laughs> and this dude's like coughing in the courtroom. The hilarious IMDb trivia is that um, after that, so it's a, it's a scene where like John is like, everyone else is allowed to kill goats. Why can't this guy? Why is he such a hog beast? Me as a white <laughs> man can go out into the street and kill a goat right now. And this mayor's police force ain't going to do shit. And he winds up, uh, and then it's the prosecutor's turn to talk, and he starts to go, (laughs) and he's coughing forever. (laughs) At the end of that scene, everyone in the crew gave that guy a standing ovation. Stop. Is that (laughs) a thing? Yeah, in the IMDb trivia. Really? They were like, oh, my God, that guy knocked that coughing scene out of the park. They were probably just happy that it was the only scene in the movie they had to do one take for. (laughs) Because let me tell you, you want me to cough in a movie? I could do a great one. You can cough till the goats come home. (coughs) That sounds pretty good. That's Oscar bait. I mean, this, like, it does remind you, though, of, like, when you're in public Mm. and someone's just having a coughing fit like that, whether you're, like, at the movies or, like, in a museum or whatever, and you just want to be, like, you know what, dude? And, like, I was, like, living vicariously through this judge who's just like, <laughs> fucking get it together. He's, <laughs> the judge is great. He's like, come on, man. Stop but, this horse shit. But also, like, not even a continuance of, like, all right, get your shit together. We'll take a recess. We'll take a or- recess where well, you can go get a fucking Ricola and <laughs> shut up in my courtroom. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just, he wins, and that takes 15 minutes. <laughs> just... <laughs> 
the next thing we get is this big party at Al Pacino's house. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. No. Jeffrey Jones's house. Whoa. Welcome back to the program. Oh, uh, my God. Who plays Eddie Bazoon. Eddie Bazoon. <laughs> Who we've already seen shredding papers, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. No, that's, no, that's later after. In the film. Yeah. Yeah. All right, oh, don't well, worry. don't worry. He Eric. does that. Uh, yeah, Jeffrey Jones is playing a scumbag in this movie. Yes. Big surprise. But this movie, though, does remind me again. The troubles were so unfortunate for the victims, first and foremost. But the troubles were also unfortunate for us as moviegoers because Jeffrey Jones is a great actor. Mm-hmm. I. I really liked him back in the day. Ferris Bueller, Beetlejuice. He's good in this, too. He he is good in this. He's, like, the third best actor in this movie. Because, like, I mean, for whatever, we're making fun of it because it is stupid and he's hee-hawing. But, like, Al Pacino's still Al Pacino. Sure. Keanu's still Keanu. But then third build, I think, is Jeffrey Jones. You know what might be a stay tuned? Uh, Mom and Dad Save the World. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's like aliens in that movie. Is that the idea? And John Lovitz. Yeah, I think John <laughs> Lovitz is an alien. First and foremost, John Lovitz. I, I, you know, I have, that was like an HBO movie. I've seen I, that movie like several times. Oh, of course. Um, so we're at this party. And, you know, um, we, inter- we get introduced to Connie Nielsen, also of SVU fame. Oh, right. She sort of replaced Mariska for a little bit. For a little bit. When we first see her and they're doing a tour of the office, she's like talking in Aramaic on her headset. I thought it was Italian. <clears throat> Is she it's, speaking well, Aramaic? He, he, either way, it sounded evil to me. <laughs> well, no, the funny thing is it, it, it's Italian. And again, the IMDb trivia. Steven Zadak right off the IMDb trivia checker. Uh, in the Italian version... They use Spanish, and in every other version, they use Italian. <laughs> oh, yeah, because some Italian person sent a note to the studio. <laughs> you know what? Please change this last part. Mussolini be damned. We're a good nation. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, she's chewing somebody out in Italian. Okay. And like, it's and like he walks in, but and that's like the first temptation, the though. Like He's like, look at that. Non hog beast, there. <laughs> See, the thing is, there is a, okay, we know it's Italian, but there was also that whoosh, wispy, oh, yeah. devilish, yeah. like whoosh. <laughs> sounded like Nico Hughes. <laughs> that or Wicket. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been famed Ewok Wicket. Maybe that's who was on the other line. <laughs> Wicket knows Ewok. Italian. She was getting the Ewoks out of a jam, yeah. maybe. Oh, yeah. it was like a triple homicide? Or, yeah, or a zoning issue with the Empire. <laughs> I don't know. They'd be in league with the devil, right? The Ewoks? Oh, yeah, they're soulless little monsters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see those dead little light bulb eyes? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I created the Ewoks. <laughs> Endor, you're welcome. I told George, you know what you need? <laughs> Teddy bears. <laughs> Can anyone in their right mind say that the new prequel trilogy was entirely mine? (laughs) Who would deny that? (laughs) And teddy bears that eat human flesh. (laughs) So this is a thread in this movie where we're supposed to be like, oh, my God. Connie Nielsen so hot, and that fucking pig Charlize Theron's getting in the way of Keanu's dick yeah, action. Yeah, right. Yes. Just stop it. They're both very incredibly attractive women, and let's just shut up. And you know what? They, it's this is so stupid too. Is like they're like, how can we make it so that this dumb ass approach is even remotely convincing? Oh, I know. We'll have some other character, Tamara Tooney. Tell Charlize, or no, it's actually, it's Al Pacino at this party. Tell her that her hair looks like garbage (laughs) so that the character will cut it and dye it and we can put Charlize in this fucking dollar store Halloween wig Mm -hmm. for the rest of this movie. The Halloween wig be damned. (laughs) Earthquake from the WWF could take a shit on her head and she could walk around the rest of the movie (laughs) With an obese man's diarrhea as a hairstyle, mm-hmm. and she's still the best looking woman you've ever seen. She's not the best smelling woman you've <laughs> no, ever seen. No, certainly not. Well, it depends what you're into. <laughs> oh, that's true. There's something for everybody on the internet. <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure Earthquake's dead. R.I.P. Sorry, everybody. Oh, uh, well, you know, that's a real 50-50. He was around in the 90s. <laughs> he was around. <laughs> Him and Typhoon. And <laughs> wow. The Is that guy disaster. dead, too? Oh, they, they were both big general. I'm, I, I, somebody's it's Typhoon gotta be, dead. Typhoon might be dead. Typhoon okay. might be. You know, Yokozuna's definitely passed away. Mm. By the way, R.I.P. Roddy Piper. Mm. I, that happened oh when we God. were off the air. That yeah. was that's terrible. a fucking tragedy. That is a tragedy. Still, for some reason, Hulk Hogan roaming the universe. <laughs> Figure that well, shit out. <laughs> if he keeps if he keeps eating pork, maybe not. <laughs> If anyone doesn't get that joke, check the transcript from his sex tape. <laughs> so at this point at the party, you know, he's like, hey, get a haircut, you ugly pig. And then he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Craig T. Nelson isn't in this movie yet, but I'm just getting warmed up. Dude, enter Craig T. Nelson as it's ostensibly Donald Trump. Yes, he's a real estate magnate, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah. The difference being Craig T. Nelson is like actually successful at building and keeping real estate in the city. <laughs> unlike that moron. Yeah, no, he's he's uh, he's no good. No, he's a no good Nick. But this he's movie... a loser. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he'll come after you. And he's balding <laughs> gracefully. Craig T. Nelson is. In this yeah, you know what? Craig T. Nelson has fucking accepted reality <laughs> when it comes to the balding. It's the best traits of. It's like what. <laughs> You, it's like the <laughs> idealistic Donald Trump. It's like what 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 you wanted him to turn out to be. You I know? vote a triple, oh, you mean a, a triple murderer. Yes, <laughs> yes, dude. I'm praying for murder charges to come up on this guy. We'll That'll see finally how it goes. derail that shit. Wouldn't surprise me. This movie is not afraid of constantly name dropping Donald Trump. By the way, like at that party we were just talking about, some woman's like, "Well, you know, Donald Trump was supposed to show up, but I guess he got in trouble with something such and such." And you're just like, yeah, I fucking get it. Al D'Amato's there for no reason. Senator Alphonse D'Amato in this movie. Why would you be in a movie like, hey, uh, hey, Senator, you want to be in a movie where you're in league with the devil? Do you think it's like, <laughs> there's that one senator? Hey, you'll never be president. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You're Italian. You're never going to be president. Come on in here. <laughs> there's, there's, there's that one senator that's in all those Batman movies because he's always been such a fan forever. Yeah, 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 Do you remember yeah, yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Maybe this guy's just always been a fan of the devil. <laughs> Hi, I'm Al de D'Amato, and I love his lord and savior, <laughs> Satan. <laughs> Vote for me, Alphonse <laughs> D'Amato. Like, I know you're like, I don't know, I guess, taking a pot shot at yourself, but like, you know, when you're Bill Clinton, like, oh, uh, uh I do love McDonald's. <laughs> That's one thing. Being like, I do. I am in league with the Prince of Darkness. Hardy <laughs> har har. Well, Your yeah. fucking party's got enough problems as, as it is. You don't need to be yucking it up that you're in league with the devil, Republican senator. It's amazing. Oh, it is just such a dumbass, wrongheaded cameo. So... The, the many movies we have going on now. A lot, lot of movies in the air. A lot of movies going on. <laughs> one is, oh my God, I'm pretty sure my boss is the devil. Uh, <laughs> the other one is, oh my God, my wife is going crazy in, a, in this haunted hotel room kind of situation. <laughs> yep. And now it's an O.J. Simpson-esque kind of murder, you know, high-profile murder case that we're going to look at extensively for no reason. And we just dip into this case It's hardcore. a subplot. It's a fucking subplot I that felt, hijacks the movie. Well, I felt like I was reading paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Kevin's big job. You know, <laughs> this is showing us that he's progressed from picking out juries to now... He's in the big leagues. <laughs> hoo -ah. And there's, I mean, <laughs> if you ever needed, like, confirmation, you as Kevin Lomax, yeah. that you're working for the devil, the whole thing is, like, at this party, it's like, everybody get down to Al Pacino's office. Some shit's going down. They get mm -hmm. down there. It's like Craig D. Nelson uh, was just arrested for murdering his wife, son, and a maid or something. maid, yes. Yeah. And so he's like, you know what I think, everybody? I think that Kevin should take this case. And like Jeffrey Jones throws up. <laughs> and they're just like, what are you talking about? This dude's been here for 48 hours. He can't be taking this case. And he's like, no, no, no. Trust me. He's going to hit it out of the park. And it's like, 
all right, he's obviously throwing this fucking opportunity at you, Kevin Lomax. He might be the devil. The other thing that might be going on is this guy might want to watch me have sex eventually. Yep. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, like yep. that's that's yep. my, my my boss wants to look at my dick. It's it's one of those. Things. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> because around this time in the movie, they start spending a lot of time together. Because oh, now Charlize oh. there is at home being, un, you know, no no one's paying attention to her. No, no, because she's got that wig on, so she's a gross hog beast. Mm-hmm. Keanu Reeves is dating Al Pacino in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene they go salsa dancing. <laughs> Dude, you mean the scene where Al Pacino gets a fucking beach in public? That's when that's I... That's New York! That's <laughs> when I stop hanging out with my boss. Like, And it's not even... I don't even think it's going to get sexual between me and my boss, but my boss is way too interested in taking his dick out in front of me. Yep. Oh, absolutely. It's a real problem. I should not be out with my boss at 2 in the morning. I should not be out with my boss in two, at 2 in the morning at a goddamn underground speakeasy salsa club. I should not be doing any of that when he's getting his fucking nut yeah, polished yeah. under a table. Like, it's just outrageous. And he, like, is looking at Keanu the whole goddamn time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, and Keanu's, like, justifying it, like, Marianne, he's the head of the goddamn firm. What am I supposed to do? Not watch him get his dick sucked? And it's like, you want this guy to respect you. He's your new boss and all. But like, sure. be assertive. Say, no, I've got plans. Yes. Like, you know, you're still going to hit it out of the park because you're Kevin Lomax. <laughs> And don't let anybody <laughs> tell you different. Don't go out with your boss to the second or third location. You want to go out after a big case and like go to O'Reilly's and pound some down and yeah. grab some fucking hamburgers and watch the Nick game. Once the Nick game ends, you're like, yeah, all right, man, huh, the old lady's going to you know break my back if I'm not home in 20 minutes. Yeah, I just sat through four quarters of basketball yes. with you. Time to go. Like this. Also, this- we live in the same house. It's weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> this whole situation. I need a place, and I, it's a beautiful apartment. Oh, it's gorgeous. But I would never live in a company apartment where ever I see. Imagine going to work every day and seeing all those fucking shit heels every which way, and then taking the subway together home, and they're your neighbors and upstairs neighbors. Speaking of the subway, by the way. What a stupid thing in this movie. Oh, I love it. How Al Pacino, the Prince of Darkness, only travels underground by subway. That I believe. (laughs) Because he's a New Yorker and all fucking seven million of us do the same goddamn thing. Uh, Also, it's, uh, you know, a wretched hive. Uh, Yeah, yeah, (laughs) Yeah, it's disgusting down there. And there's a, there's a lot of. A lot of uh, unwanted things happening. Let's say I've seen people arrested for playing special places. (laughs) That's a true life MTA Uh, tale. Can I I tell you the one time um, when I was taking the subway back to the Bronx? uh, I'm just reading a book. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm a little drunk. And an elderly lady across the street, uh, across the way from me is throwing negative energy at me. (laughs) <laughs> she's looking at me with a scowl. Yeah. And she's like doing an improv exercise. She's grabbing up into the en- into nothing. Oh no. G- making a fist as if she's grabbed something and then throwing it at me. Really? <laughs> and it's happening and it's like negative huju energy. Dude, were you were you starting to feel a little low? <laughs> she did working? turn into a demon for I, a second like they you, do in this movie. You got cursed. I did get cursed. Dude, Dude I just, saw... Is that is that the end of the story? Did I just kind of sat there for like seven stops taking it, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Re- I would have moved to another car. <laughs> Dude, you got a whole clip full of negative energy. <laughs> she reloaded and reloaded. Dude, when Al Pacino is taking him through Chinatown and Keanu Reeves is just eating loose chicken in his hand and Al Pacino is like trying to find a restaurant or whatever it is and he starts speaking Chinese, quote, quote, to this Chinese dude and it's just clearly a guy speaking Chinese in an Al Pacino impression. That's the worst dub I've seen in a long time. Ni hao! (laughs) Oh, dude, it is out of control. He's asking for directions to this restaurant. He's like, I got to find where's that chicken? And he goes up to this guy and he just 
it's a guy doing an Al Pacino impression in Chinese. It's amazing. That's the movie I like, though, when he's, like, mixing it up with people. When he goes in the subway and tells that guy to go kill his girlfriend or whatever. That's oh, kind of yeah. a fun scene. Because he's he's being allowed to be the devil. Mm -hmm. And he's doing stuff as opposed to being like, ah, what's Coach up to? You know? like, <laughs> And, like, watching, yeah. you know, Craig T. Nelson be like, ah, oh, jeez, Christine, I can't believe I killed the maid. <laughs> What's Jerry Van Dyke going to say about this? <laughs> or Dauber? Oh, man, Dauber. I was a big Dauber fan. <laughs> Dude, do you think <laughs> they're doing this coach reboot? Do you think Dauber's coming back? Uh, they Canceled already, it. Yeah, they already pulled oh, the plug. Oh, yeah. really? Mm -hmm. R.I.P.D. coach, too. Yeah. That's too bad. Sorry, Craig T. You can't get that sitcom on the air again. Not even the devil himself. <laughs> So CBS is playing for keeps. <laughs> there, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, are, all right. There's so many more dates that <laughs> Al Pacino and, and uh, Keanu go on. Yeah. Yeah. Another Moving, person that's happy to be associated with the devil, Don King. That's shows. what I was getting oh, to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go to a boxing match because come on, Kevin, put your dukes up. It's Roy Jones Jr. and some other dude. It's back when you could go to Madison Square Garden and watch boxing. That doesn't really happen anymore. No. Yeah. And, dude, Just, yeah, okay. there struts in Don King himself. Don King. Actual. Colon, personal friend of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. Oh, man. This movie's kind of taking me to task for being a little bit in league with Satan. And you know what? Guaranteed Don King didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's like, you want me to be in the movie? Like, all right, I'll be in a movie. He had no fucking clue. It's like, yeah, you're going to get to meet Al Pacino. <laughs> oh, fa oh, that's fantastic. And that, but yeah, oh, dude, that, why does a movie... <laughs> A fucking pseudo devil legal drama movie need all these cameos. I don't get it. Why is this movie chock full of cameos? Fucking Al D'Amato, Roy Jones Jr., Don King. Uh, there, there is your extra 24 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This boxing match, among other things. Yeah, you're totally right. It'd be great if, like, the son of Sam could have been in the movie, too. <laughs> like, just... Oh, or, thanks, man. Thanks. Or, or, Justifying his lunacy. <laughs> or he's talking to the dog that told him to do it. <laughs> like Al Pacino's just like, oh, hello, pooch. <laughs> 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 thanks for that job you pulled in the Bronx. Hoo-ha. <laughs> <laughs> that job. <laughs> Can we talk about, like, this weird sex scene in this movie? Yeah, because... Charlie's Theron has a fucking breakdown, one of many breakdowns, because she's losing her shit because Tamara Tooney's like turned into the demons and shit. Yeah, they go shopping and she shows her her demon face in the dressing room. Well, also her breasts for like 15 solid minutes. It's oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's why this movie is in heavy rotation on Cinemax. <laughs> you Thank could you very much. Tamara Tooney. You couldn't, you couldn't do that shot from behind the back or anything like that and still accomplish the same thing. No, I gotta see the nips. Not only that, though, it's a weird, like, just touch it. Just touch it. Come on, just touch it. The work of Dr. Robert. Dr. Robert. I'm like, are you quoting the fucking Beatles song right now? Like, what is going on? Like, she says Dr. Robert like 12 times in this scene. And it's just like, I mean, that scene yeah, is tailor-made for Martin Cinemax. Sp supposedly they're fake, but you can't tell. And, God, just like, who would want to go out shopping with someone and then it's like, you got to feel their breasts all night. <laughs> well, I'm, <laughs> well, well, you know, if, yeah. To I, point, I'm sure there's people that want to do that. I, but. I kind of agree, though. Like, it's that. I understand the social pressure of being in this bizarre building that's only with your husband's coworkers. Stop hanging out with them. Yes, like say no. Get a job, join a book group, go to fucking Times Square and figure it out. I don't no, know. Take like, a class, do something. Don't hang out with these vile women. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Once if we if at the beginning of our friendship we were like, oh, man, cool. Let's go try on some pants. Andrew's like, hey, man, look at my balls. I'm like, you know what? I'm never talking to that guy ever <laughs> again. Oh, oh, oh. Dr. Robert. <laughs> Can you t I mean, you can't even tell I had my balls shot off. <laughs> Feel them. Feel them.
Feel them again. It's mainly material from an old pinball machine, <laughs> but Dr. Robert works miracles. And one of the things this movie does is really bad CGI morph. It like always it's like it's kind of jump scares, I guess. I remember actually being in the theaters and I was a bit of a coward. I was like, oh, there's, <laughs> dude, they're so slow. There's yeah. no way this is a jump scare. Yeah. And by the way, the final product is fucking Baraka from Mortal Kombat. Yes, it's all everyone that's what it looks Baraka. Like. <laughs> <laughs> They've just got those razor sharp teeth. It's like a shark faced human. No, they look exactly like Dust Till Dawn vampires. You know, yeah, in the middle of Dust yeah, Till Dawn, totally for some right. reason, oh, all the vampires all... turn into monsters. And all the vampires have exposed bosoms. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> well, right there. There it is. Dude, shared cinematic universe, you think? I think so. You think What's... the devil ran the titty twister? <laughs> I think so. And I think he also runs Cinemax because that is a double feature. Oh, that yeah. Oh, there. <laughs> My favorite two horror movies are the devil's advocate and from dusk till dawn <laughs> the only thing i regret is salma hayek had too much clash to take her fucking bra off if i had to go back in time and tell robert rodriguez one thing you know what it would be <laughs> she didn't no, she, no, she, no she's no, not making that movie oh wow i don't know what i was thinking <laughs> Uh, but Quentin Tarantino certainly sucks on her toe for 48 seconds. Oh, man. And, you know, I think there's an extended edition out oh, there. Yeah. Well, speaking of fucking platinum DVDs. <laughs> yeah, the Quentin Tarantino's platinum DVD collection. <laughs> Ew. Um, so, so, hey, you know what? Jeffrey Jones drops dead in this movie. Well, I do want to do the sex scene. Oh, right. Oh, the sex scene. Excuse me. Sorry. So <laughs> she's all frazzled. She's had a nervous breakdown. She's seen the face of true evil, right? And she comes back and she's like, oh, my God, Kevin, I can't believe what's going on. I saw the face of true evil in the Barney's dressing room. And Kevin's like, yeah, I'm kind of hard right now, baby. You know, <laughs> well, it's you know what it is. It's the old our life is crumbling. Let's fix it with a baby. <laughs> also, Pacino has been buttering. He's been warming him up all night. Yeah. He comes <laughs> home and he's fucking ready to go. Listen, honey, I got to meet Don King this evening. I'm hard as a fucking rock. <laughs> I'm harder than his hair. Let's oh, go. Honey, I almost started boxing with this. I almost got in the <laughs> ring. <laughs> so I could clobber those guys. I'm going to beat this man to death with my dick, honey. Let's make a baby. And so that they, you know, they start fooling around. And she instantly turns into Connie Nielsen. Because fucking whatever. And I mean, it's he's like, oh, that's so much better. But not even that. I'd be like, oh, fuck, I'm crazy. I got to, like, if I'm like... Having sex with my partner and all of a sudden they're a different person, you like wanna... I'm fucking mystique. I'm like, no, 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 dude. You want to know how to rapidly lose an erection? <laughs> you start fucking a shapeshifter, and you don't know they're a shapeshifter. Exactly. What a fright! I think that's in the extended cut of Star Trek Six as well. <laughs> God. So yeah, and she's just like changing back and forth. Yes, and, and it's like he's like, and he's like. Always, like, disappointed when Charlie's Theron shows back up. Dude, it's like turning a light switch on and off. It's like, <laughs> I'm excited, now I'm sad. I'm excited, now I'm sad. Which is crazy. First it's totally but nuts. also, this is like Martin Cinemax III's best scene in cinema history, because you get double the yeah. yeah. One character, four tenths. <laughs> It'd be great if in the middle of this, she turns into uh, Chris Bauer. You know what I mean? Like, he looks up and he's like, oh, no, I'm fucking a hog beast. Special places. <laughs> oh, no, he's covered in serum. <laughs> covered in I'll just fuck 1,000 pancakes. No, no, keep it in. Titties are titties. Chris Bauer, he's stacked. <laughs> We just upped the quote at a six. <laughs> I think by Martin Cinemax and Al Pacino are the exact same. Yeah, it's the same difference. Stacked like pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it, no, no. You can't, can you work in another so we can get some silver dollars in this picture? <laughs> I would like that. You know, change it up. Uh, and... Of course, like most times when you start having sex with your wife uh, in, in the middle of a breakdown, it doesn't end well. <laughs> yeah, nobody really gets to finish. She's just, she's just like, where are you? What the fuck are you doing? Why are you calling me Connie Nielsen? <laughs> <laughs> Please stop calling me Connie Nielsen. <laughs> oh, Connie Nielsen. <laughs> and then, you know, Kevin is like, 
You must be crazy, not me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not crazy. I'm seeing shit, but you're the one in tears. Dude, yeah, I, I would question my own sanity, Kevin fucking Lomax, son of the devil. You're <laughs> suffering from hysteria. <laughs> it's a woman's problem. <laughs> I'm from Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Craig T. Neal, there's some bullshit. The the internet's Craig T. Nelson's case, who cares? But basically, at the end, Kevin finds out that Craig T. Nelson totally did it. Totally did it. Because um, his mistress, who he's supposed to be having sex with, doesn't know if he's cut or not. Dude, it's amazing. He's, was he circumcised? Like, they're, they're doing, like, the, the run-through of the, you know... Um, like, getting Not ready interrogation, for but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just like... Is he circumcised? And she's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You've been fucking this man for the better part of a year and you don't know if he's cut. I mean, I even know my <laughs> boss is not cut. I mean, <laughs> that's just something somebody's got to know. So, I mean, it, it matters nothing it's no. just like he wins another case craig t nelson's off the hook off the hook and out of this movie by the way yes well no he's got one more scene left okay um this is the end of jeffrey jones oh man yeah so jeffrey jones like, my favorite scene in the movie period. Oh, hands down oh, easily this is the best. so we've seen him he's having a big shred fest you know that like his character uh, again named eddie bazoon <laughs> Is you know he's not on the up and up. Keanu like catches him shredding a bunch of shit. So then Al Pacino, uh, you know, devil nepotism makes his son a partner. Mm. And so because they live in the same building, they're constantly running into coworkers. And so he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, I saw your names on a placard now and whatever. Like, way to go, you fucked me. You went around me. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And he goes for a jog. He says, oh, the next time the Justice Department calls, I'm probably gonna pick up. Oh, right. right. And it's yeah. a good delivery. It's a nice Jeffrey yeah. Jones. Yeah. And oh, he yeah. was, he's been helping the devil by shredding all this shit. Here's a question. Yes. Does Jeffrey Jones know that the devil's the devil? And or does Craig T. Nelson know that the devil's the devil? Because they both are like, what are you thinking right now, the devil? They're always like going against I'm like, if, if, if I'm working for the devil, I'm like, hey, man, whatever think, you say goes. Yeah, the I devil. feel like I feel like if you are an employee of that law firm, mm-hmm. like if you pass your six month probationary period, <laughs> yes. which Keanu is still in, sure. um, you know the score. Yeah, I feel like Craig T. Nelson kind of has an idea, but he doesn't work for them. OK, that's true. So he like it's kind of like you're like, yeah, that dude's the devil, but he's doing great things for me. So I'm not going to say anything <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, ruin the deal. But like you know, Jeffrey Jones is like my parking space. The devil. I'm not. I'm fucking keeping my fat mouth shut. Because <laughs> that's well, well. That's it's just. Listen, dude. You work with anybody long enough, you're gonna start getting fast and loose with them. Also, yeah. You also want to rise up in the ghoulish ranks and you know your soul is damned. I mean, you got to show a little initiative. That, that's fair. Yeah, and you could you want you want to brush up against the heavies every so often. So yeah. Keanu Reeves like goes to see Al Pacino, and he's like. You know, hey, what's going on? Why did I get this promotion? What's Eddie Barzoon doing? Ooh-ha. And he, <laughs> and Al Pacino launches into this monologue. I, this is like one of two. I had this mo- Eddie Barzoon monologue on a Winamp file. You <laughs> did not. I certainly did. Yeah, Holy man. moly. You mix this in with some... Uh, some switchfoot? Yeah. <laughs> not switchfoot. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Papa Power Roach. Man 5000. <laughs> Papa Roach, some mud vein was going on. Stained. <laughs> a little bit of stain. Literally anything by yeah. Aaron Lewis. Static X. You know, and then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden Pacino like, Eddie Barzoon. <laughs> God's special little creature. <laughs> What's amazing is one of the details he gives is something about, like, he's helped. And what he say? He's like, Eddie Bazoon got him through three horrific divorces, <laughs> one massive cocaine addiction, and one knocked up babysitter. Like, something like that. You're just like. Yeah, Eddie Barzoon was comfortable working with the devil. Yeah, it was just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do whatever I want. My boss is the devil. He's going to get me out of it. Don't worry about it. Also a nice touch is he says, Eddie Barzoon, 250 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you think Jeffrey Jones was privy to that part of the script or he went to the devil's advocate premiere and was like, 
hey. <laughs> I think it was a hey. Because <laughs> he's... For this scene, uh, Jeffrey, you just get your sides, and we'll pick. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Ed, Eddie Barzoon makes the mistake of running onto the haunted um, path from uh, Ghostbusters Two. It's the Central Park Reservoir. It's the exact same path where they catch that runner, and there's there's a couple of ghosts behind him, and he's yeah. like, "Hey, he's like, hey, watch where you're going." Oh, ghost! <laughs> oh no, I. I got bumped into by a ghost. <laughs> but he's still a dick to everybody. He still doesn't even really care. <laughs> no, I know. He's just like, ah, fucking Manhattan ghosts. <laughs> I'm a low-level ghoul. I've, I know the score. <laughs> I've been living at 666 Park Avenue for quite some time. I'm well aware. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I watched more of that show than I had any business watching. If it's I think it. I was the only one tuning in at the end. It was just you. It was just me and whoever was on that show. John Locke. So he's just spitting. Uh, he's dropping a fat fucking deuce on Eddie Barzoon, right? <laughs> he's a, a hot verse about Eddie Barzoon. Yeah. He's really throwing him under the devil bus. Which I think this this is so much better. This scene is so much better than the end of the movie. And it's, it's the same grandstanding that Pacino does at the end. Yes. Right. But it's really short. It's intercut with interesting visuals. And yeah, it you're works. looking at other it's things well behind. Yeah. Besides him dancing. This is the best part of the movie. It, is. it really also is. also climaxes with him being beaten to death by <laughs> demon Homeless hobos. De- <laughs> These are hobos with demon faces. <laughs> oh, man, it's pretty great. They trip him, and somebody's like, one of them's like, give me your watch. And he's like, no, you got to take it. And I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? You're Eddie Barzoon. You can afford a new watch. Yeah, who cares? Don't Don't... Number one, dangerous hobo. Who ha? Do what they say. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, especially if you're two on the ground already and you're morbidly obese. You're all, yeah, you're morbid. He's two hundred and fifty pounds. You're on the ground. You're injured. You're surrounded by two hobos armed with branches. <laughs> branches, by the way, you're beaten to death by nature. Yeah, and. They're also devilish in origin. You give up the fucking watch. And then Seriously. you think just 30 seconds ago when you were bad-mouthing your boss, the devil, and you're like, oh, wait. Does this have anything connection to that? <laughs> it's the almost, ghosts and the demon hobos. Dude, are you independent demons? Are you working for uh, John Milton? It is almost as if he forgets that Lucifer himself is signing the checks. <laughs> yes. And he starts running his mouth to this dude. And these these creatures just beat him to death. There's a great, like, arm break. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, God. And Jeffrey Jones is just screaming. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I was wondering while watching this if this is going to happen to him in the afterlife. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. There's a special place in hell for Jeffrey Jones. Special places. <laughs> Allegedly, I think. Or, whatever, you know, maybe let's not get sued. Yeah. I, you know, we, we don't know the extent of the troubles. Yeah, but, was, you know, they were the troubles. They and were the he tr- can't shake the troubles. So he dies. And Connie Nielsen starts crying. Like, oh, my God. Eddie Barzoon died. And Dude, then we, this, this office is a wreck <laughs> over the death of Eddie Barzoon. One of their own ghouls has been sent home, I guess. <laughs> it's a real sad story. Yeah. And... This is when we go to Eddie Barzoon's funeral. Oh, at this point, um, I'm sorry. Uh, this is when uh, Charlize is in the in the church and reveals that she's been like clawed up to to shit, and she claims that Al Pacino raped her. Yes, and he's like, "How could he rape you? He was with me the whole damn day. We went salsa dancing. We went on a we went on the high line together. Listen, he talked to me for fifty eight minutes about Eddie Barzoon. <laughs> it was really long." I was three. getting really fucking bored. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, does he have his foreskin? <laughs> He's asking everybody that. Yeah. Is he cut or what? That's you don't was. know, do you? <laughs> Eddie Barzoon was cut. <laughs> That's why I'm the greatest lawyer in New York City. Craig T. Nelson has his foreskin. <laughs> That's why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> We're at this fucking funeral. Well, I, I, at this point, um, he commits. Um, oh the, yeah, she goes. She goes. He commits into Charlie an, th- an to, to an asylum, whatever. to the worst asylum in history. Hands down. By the way, no one ever fucking thinks of maybe send her back to Florida for a little while. The, you know, get her out of the city. This Keanu is Reeves isn't Rome. having it. Of all people, Al Pacino suggests it. And also, 
the mother visits briefly. Oh, this oh, yeah. mother character. Oh, Who could possibly boy. care? Yeah. She's a real Bible babbling so and so. She looks yeah. exactly like Alice from uh Yes from uh, Brady Bunch. Brady Bunch, thank you so mm. much. It's a cross of Alice and the woman who plays um Sparkle Motion. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sparkle I thought Motion. it was her. <laughs> yeah. It's not her. I guess it's not her. No, it's not her. It's some other lady. Um, but it's great. So I commit my wife. To an insane asylum. Yep. And I'm such a piece. And he, he truly loves her. Like, that's what the movie tells you. But you're going to go to your mortal enemy's funeral. You're going to, like, walk away from your personal treasure. Like, I got to pay my respects to Eddie Barzoo. And you know why? Because it's the fucking social event of the month. <laughs> Let me tell you. The, the chit-chat. That is oh, going yeah. on during Eddie Barzoon's funeral is unacceptable. All of his old clients are up for grabs, and they're there. They're, no, it's it's all of that. Craig T. Nelson's there, kind of like massaging his stepdaughter, which is it's a weird subplot that goes fucking nowhere. Zero places. Keanu Reeves envisions that that's Chris Bauer for a second, but mm-hmm. no, nobody cares. This movie nope. doesn't give a shit. But Tamara Tooney and and uh, what's her face? Uh, Oh, Connie Nielsen. Connie Nielsen. I was the only other actress who's not Charlize Theron in yep. this movie. Um, are there like, and they're just like chatting with Keanu Reeves, just, just like talking through this funeral. And it's not even like, hey, we're in a church and we have to whisper. <laughs> about- so, uh, how's your wife doing? Oh, it is just so sad that she was committed. Oh, you look fantastic at this funeral. And he doesn't see demon faces here. This is also the scene when Pacino shows up and he does his little dance around the holy water. Oh, right. yeah. He's the, looking so, at all the stained glass pictures. So Keanu is th- then meets this um, Justice Department fellow oh, on the street who this is like this dude 75 whole, seconds. Yeah, gives him the whole spiel and about he also, the uh, evil things. No, no, no. And uh, he also at the end says, and, and we found a, a uh, you know, Gettys, which Chris Bauer was found in, in Florida today with a girl in his trunk, a 10 year old girl. Yeah. So that's like, all right, Keanu, you're like you, you stepped over the line, like defending people you knew were guilty, blah, blah, blah. Right. But what he also says is that Eddie Bazoon was ready to testify. And it's like, OK, why yeah. would you testify against the devil? Like what? You know, like the only way to do that is if I'd be like, "Hey, dude, are you an angel?" <laughs> like the only <laughs> the only person that could actually help me right now would be an angel. Listen, you're saying that you work for the Justice Department, but are you Justice Department agent Clarence? Because <laughs> that's the only deal I'm gonna take. Well, I'm no, that's gonna the need thing. to speak to your supervisor, Mister <laughs> Christ. Eddie Barzoon would testify against the devil. <laughs> That's the problem. Eddie Barzoon flew a little too close to the mm, sun. I see what you're saying. So uh, this, this guy gets hit by a car dude, like nobody's guy, business. And listen, you see this coming a mile well, away. This is also like his finger Al Pacino's dirty old man finger in the <laughs> in the puddle in the church. I guess it's the called holy, holy, they call water. holy water. Yes. yes. Makes a car hit this guy. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. makes a car come to life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think someone's driving the car. I know, but then I guess the holy bubbles <laughs> bubble in their brain to hit someone with a car. It is a synchronized hit. I agree. It, it is. is. It's definite. There's a correlation. It'd be great if Cerebus <laughs> was driving. Like you just see, like this three-headed dog. Well, no one's gonna believe that three-headed <laughs> dog was driving the car. <laughs> So this dude's dead, and it doesn't matter. But this guy sh- gets punted. Like, he fucking oh, goes yeah. for a ride oh, after I, get hit by this guy. Dude, his head looks like a fucking Gallagher watermelon at the end of a set. <laughs> He's like, well, I guess I better go back to my wife who's legally insane now. <laughs> and he goes there, and it's, like we said, the worst state running like, Mental institution, this guy's a millionaire. It should be the best. They have her in this hotel room with chairs and all this stuff. And, like, it's nice. But it it doesn't work out no, very well. No, it's and crap. also this is like a ghost town. There's like a nurse. Yep. For this whole floor, you never see a doctor in no. this movie, like at all. And she's just sitting there. She's totally like zoned out, like a vegetable. The mother has come back up from Florida, and like through this whole thing, all this is going on. She's like, by the way, <laughs> I have been to New York City before. I lied to you that last time. And he's like, 
Mom, what are you trying to say? <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, your father's the devil. Your father's, your father's, father's the devil. Your father's, your father's, father's, father's the devil. Father's uh, father's 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 she fucked the devil. Well, she you. went to like some cafe and a smooth talking waiter. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, she the came to New York. The devil waiting table. <laughs> By the way, you want to talk about a waste of fucking time? She came to New York City on a missionary mission. You're not converting anyone in Well, that's, uh, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, no one in New York City is being converted to shit. No. So that's what she says. They came on this missionary trip. They stayed in this same hotel. And he was just a, a nice little waiter. And we saw him every night. And that final night, it was raining. And I, I got wet. And we were just horny as hell. And she also makes a point to say that she was 16 years old. Oh, no, yeah. Well, only the devil. 16 and- years old. <laughs> And at this point, um, while she's telling him this story, uh, Keanu Reeves has this secretary who's also a demon, uh, who's like, oh. Oh, Peg. Uh, Pam. <laughs> oh, Pam, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Char- it's like, Charlize Theron, you're so pretty. Look how pretty you are. Look, And it's just, it's just Pam and this woman. No nurses to be found. No real, uh, like, there's one other patient in this hospital. Where are the... Big fucking orderlies that could break yes. through everything, which are in every mental institution because you need mm-hmm. them. Yeah. Or, or where is Chief? Where is <laughs> Where is Chief? Great question. And you know, she shows her, and she's like, "Oh, I, oh wow, I am Charlie Theron. That's a, not too bad." And then she looks over at Pam, and she's a demon. Yes. And, Man. A, mirror, <laughs> and a mirror breaks. She attacks her, and at this point, she closes her door and puts a chair up to the door. Yeah. Yep. Thus. Making it impossible for anyone to break through. Yep. Which is, you know why? If you're designing the room for a mental patient who's on suicide watch, make sure that shit can't happen. Yep. Or make sure there's two doors. Or an, an outward opening door. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> every door opens outward for that exact reason. Dude, you should not be able to pull off the old Hollywood chair prop in a <laughs> mental institution. No, not at all. And so she takes a shard of mirror and cuts her own throat. And Keanu's going nuts. And this is when he goes a little bit over the top. He's, yeah. I think because he's gearing up to have a screaming match with Al Pacino in the next scene. Uh So he's like screaming at dead Charlize Theron, you know? (laughs) Oh, babe! Oh, my God, babe! And what's amazing, though, is like... (laughs) He walks out. The mother's just sitting in the, like the waiting room again of this empty fucking hospital, and he comes out. He's covered in blood, and he's just he like, like a reservoir dog at the end of this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a jewel heist did go south on him, and he's just like very calmly like finish the story, and she's like, I fuck the devil, and that dude's your father, you know. And so he's like, all right, well, I got to go. Here's, And I'm like, all right, here's the big face-off. Because admittedly, I didn't remember much about this movie. By the way, in case you were wondering, when Charlize Theron takes her life, there is time for a full three-act with commercials Great Twilight Zone episode to happen. <laughs> it's 30 minutes. 30 minutes left of this movie. You're totally when she, right. When she ends her life, when there should be like nine. We start. Like a little tiny one act play. Yep. Because we get to Al Pacino's big fucking devil. Office. Can we just do the really quick thing when the when the world stops and he's walking through New York? And oh it's empty yeah. And there's the big who nobody beats the whiz sign <laughs> that he's walking past. Oh my god! Speaking of Manhattan, completely empty. It's fucking heaven. What's, <laughs> what's heaven doing in this movie? <laughs> So he shows up to uh, Al Pacino's penthouse, and we can start talking about this stupid fucking sculpture. Oh, man. Oh, this yeah, thing. yeah. It's, uh, I believe, Brimstone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the TV show Brimstone? <laughs> no, no, no. I believe it's no, yeah. The, uh, from ha- the bowels of Hades. Oh, the, you know, you're paying a lot in shipping costs to get that up to Manhattan. <laughs> well, you know, you're the devil. You can <laughs> spare no expense if you you're safe. Move mountains. <laughs> there was something, speaking of IMDb trivia, that I remembered about, like, this sculptor sued the shit out of them yeah. for some reason. They had to change, whatever it is. But So this thing's coming to life, and yeah. it's terrifying. And it's stupid because it doesn't do anything. They like, don't... if you're making a statue come to life, it needs to come off the wall and, like, fight him or well, something. Well, there's, oh. like, little stone people having orgies. Or it would be great if Eddie Barzoon was part of it. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, like Freddy Krueger and all the souls of the Elm Street kids are in his chest. Yes, exactly. Like, <laughs> a, a big, fat Jeffrey Jones statue. Like, <laughs> oh, this this statue just fell off the wall because it gained <laughs> 250 pounds. That's a load-bearing wall, Eddie. 
So, I mean, this is Pacino just goes into this whole fucking thing. And it's like, I've been waiting a long time for you, kid. You know, here's your sister. You got to fuck her. And I want to do this. And what doesn't make any sense, though, and as far as my understanding, because this is also not only are we trying to be Rosemary's Baby and fucking Law and Order SVU, we're also trying to be the Omen. Yes. And the whole thing is, and he's like, you know, oh, I get it. You're trying to make the Antichrist. And I was like, well, didn't the Omen tell us that, like, Damien was the son of the devil and that was the Antichrist? So wouldn't Keanu Reeves be the Antichrist? I mean, I guess... And this this kid's just going to be the devil's grandchild? (laughs) Which, that's a fucking Tom Clancy novel title. <laughs> well, I guess the idea is, like, super bad because it's incest also. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, and the weird thing is, he, he's fucking Connie Nielsen this whole movie. There's, like, scenes where, like, he's going up in an elevator. Yep. There's a great scene where, like, they took Keanu Reeves' mother out to dinner. And, like, they're, <laughs> they're all going inside the apartment. He's like, hey, Keanu, you want to go upstairs for a, a cocktail? And it's yeah. like... Connie Nielsen and this other woman making out. He's like, that's right. You want to have an orgy with your boss? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. Let's finish this date off right. That's more Christopher Lloyd than not. Uh, so, I mean, it's just whatever. There's there's no way to recount this monologue because it's 25 minutes of him hoo ha all over the One place. One thing I hate is in the middle of it, he, like, recounts a line from Keanu Reeves, and they just, like, ADR the line, the, the Keanu Reeves dialogue. Oh, yeah, he talks like Keanu Reeves I for always, no reason. It's the, that's the laziest, like, fake special effect that somebody has, like, mystical powers. Um, it's, it's a fake power. How yeah. about when he starts singing that goddamn uh, song? Holy Oh, well, that was the Toledo. thing that I wasn't sure about because you see the record get put on, and I was like, oh, is this a Spike lip sync battle? <laughs> Well, I was like, is is it the record or is Al Pacino as the devil singing like Frank Sinatra? Mm-hmm. Like that's, but oh, it, maybe he was Frank Sinatra. Oh, oh well, that makes fucking. Well, sense. he does say in the middle of this enormous monologue that he has so many children. Like he's like, oh, I've had a lot of disappointments, Kevin. My disappointing son, entertainer Frank Sinatra. <laughs> the mafia didn't really work out for him. <laughs> But whatever. So the end of it is like, you got to fuck your sister and make the Antichrist. And Keanu- While I'm here, by the way. Oh, I'm going to watch. I'm going to hold your oh, sister's hand while you do it. His shirt is already open. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think you might join in. Yeah, mm-hmm. mind if I get in on this? He's yeah, He's going to have some busy digits while this shit's going I on. I might be teabagging one of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, like, that's the thing. It's like, he starts negotiating his thing. He's like, well, Dad, I won't. This, that, and the other thing. By the way, could you be in the next room when this happens? Yeah, really? <laughs> could That's you, like, a term of this. <laughs> yes, exactly. You mind being, like, away from me while this goes down? And this is the biggest point of just nonsense in this movie. Here's a quick question, though. Oh, okay. Genetically, yes. like... He's John Milton, and, like, that's a, a biological form, right? Right, yeah. Does that mean, like, Keanu Reeves is supposed to look anything like Al Pacino and or that K- Connie Nielsen's supposed to look anything like Al Pacino? Well, oh, yeah, I don't know. Keanu has dark hair. <laughs> And Al Pacino has dark hair. Uh, sure. Keanu is a human being. Uh, <laughs> John Milton is supposed to be a human being, a humanoid so, yeah. being. Buy it and let's move on. And his mother's <laughs> like four eight two. She's like a little Rhea Perlman. <laughs> like it's like, dude, this guy's six foot three. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Maybe there's uh it skips a generation. <laughs> <laughs> so, so God is really tall. <laughs> yeah, why not? So somehow Al Pacino, as the devil, doesn't think about that gun that Keanu Reeves has in his pocket Mm -hmm. that he used to shoot Al Pacino at the start of this whole thing. Oh, right, yeah. And you get that scene of, like, Pacino, like, the squibs are going off, and he's like, oh, yeah, oh, do it again. Oh, it feels great. Oh, (laughs) Dunkachino. And it's not, but the funny thing is, like, at that point, I guess some idiot in the audience is supposed to drop their jaw, like, <gasps> he was the devil the whole time. <laughs> so Keanu is like, all right, Dad, you're right. Free will, right? Well, here we go. And he pulls the gun out and blows his fucking brains out. And I'm like, um, John Milton, as the devil, mm-hmm. how did you not see this coming? Yep. How did you not see this play? 
What are you talking about? <laughs> How is this allowed to happen in the devil's office? Uh, only the devil's son can fool the devil. <laughs> So he gets really mad and he bursts flames out of his butthole and <laughs> flies all over the room and Dude, cooks that sister up. Al Pacino fucking sets on fire in this movie for no reason. He turns into a demon for two seconds. A little bit. He, and it's weird. He's like blue. Like, I don't know what's going on. There's no fucking horns. There's no pointy cape. Like, come on. Yeah, I don't get a close up of those goat feet, which I know are there. <laughs> <laughs> I saw those shoes on the roof. God damn it. That's what I want uh, at the end of that great Twilight Zone with the, the howling man when, like, oh, yeah, it's this guy. And, like, you know, at the end, there's that great scene where he's, like, going from thing to thing. And, like, he becomes more and more cartoonishly the devil. Oh, yeah. Until at the end, he's exactly the, the lamest guy at your office Halloween party. <laughs> but, like, that's what I want at the end is, like, he just finally has the fucking widow's mm-hmm. peak and everything. Yeah. But we don't get that. Instead, the movie just resets. And remember that bathroom scene we told you about? We're back in the bathroom, and he's washing his fucking face off We're in the sink. We're back in Gainesville, Florida. That, it's something the no one, trial. no one ever wants to have happen. Well, yeah, Go you don't back to it. Gainesville. But- yeah, with a hog beast. <laughs> Yeah, we're back to the hog beast trial. In the middle of Al Pacino's conniption as the devil, he turns into Keanu Reeves like as the fallen angel, which oh, is yeah. so stupid. He sprouts wings and a Keanu Reeves face and gets Jesus hair and screams, but it's Keanu Reeves screaming in the voice of Al Pacino. So you're, I guess, in this idea of biology, oh. he's going to grow up to look like Al Pacino? <laughs> Question mark. I guess so he's going to so. shrink two and a half feet. I guess that was... <laughs> That was the mo- you know Lucifer the fallen angel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Wow, it's adding up. It's tw- twelve years of Catholic <laughs> school, Eric. Don't worry about it. Yeah, okay, you're well, here with I a don't... semi-pro. <laughs> okay, good. So I'm an uh, amateur. <laughs> so you know, Keanu Reeves is like, you know what? I'm just going to blow this whole thing. He goes back into the courtroom. He's like, you know what? This guy is a rapist, and I'm not going to defend him. And Your Honor, I quit. And he runs out, and it's like, oh, I'm going to be disbarred, this, that, and the other By thing. By the way, all you're doing is giving this guy the best mistrial in history. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're not still- exactly saving the day. No. Um, and so then it's like, the, that reporter comes back out, and he's just like, we got to talk about this. This is 60 Minutes. This is the New York Times. This is big stuff. It's, it's a wire story, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I'm probably going to get fired, so I'll see you later, or whatever. And they walk away. And the fucking last shot of this movie is this reporter morphing into Al Pacino. Oof. And he's like, vanity, my favorite scene. <laughs> and fucking fire comes up and he's laughing his balls off. And painted black shows. It's, it's, a, it's a bad movie hat trick. Yep. Because it's, yeah. we're breaking the fourth wall. We're using terrible special effects. Yep. And we're playing the most obvious music cue to end your movie. Yep. And it's also like we're going to do the cop out ending and then we're going to because it's like, oh, wow, that's oh, it's pretty brave. Did they reset the movie? Like, so No, no, <laughs> it's going to end the same way because the devil always wins. Well, what, are we, to, what are we fun, to believe fun. that it's just going to start all over again? There's another devil's advocate to watch. Yes. I'm not doing it. Yeah, does this count as a sequel set up? <laughs> There, it's going to be like a pun off of uh, some type of press or vanity, devil, whatever. Yeah. What a better ending is if Keanu Reeves just kills himself and thwarts the devil through suicide. Yep. Like, just he end shit the, the devil. There. That's it. I mean, like, and he's but learned suicide's a sin, Steve, so he's going to hell, though. But he knows that because he's a really good Christian. And also, think about this. Now they got that mistrial. Now this poor molested girl has to go back up on the stand again and then get berated by another lawyer. <laughs> yeah, you're totally right. There's no way this Good ending job. is working out for anybody. Nobody. And it's just like, who cares? Why throw your movie in the garbage after a two and a, to have a two and a half hour movie end with a wink and a here we go again? I want to break something. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite sin. <laughs> and then Princess Daisy kicks down the wall. <laughs> You're not going to believe Fucking this, seriously. Al Pacino. Would anybody recommend this movie? Uh, no. It, it's got... This movie has about as many beginnings as Lord of, uh, Lord of the Rings has endings. <laughs> because like you could have started this movie four or five times. You could right. start when just them moving into the apartment building. Yeah. You could start any old time. You can cut three or four subplots. It's just bloated. Aside from the Eddie Barzun scene, like I don't see there's a lot of value here. That that ending monologue thing, which I really loved as a kid, is just bloated and just like come on. Yeah. 
if you find yourself in the late 1990s, <laughs> I would say definitely see. <laughs> That platinum but DVD. You never know. There's, you know, inter- this is out broadcasted. And, you know, time travelers, interdimensional aliens, whatever, may be listening. Sure, they might. It's totally true. That's possible. But I would say, don't see it otherwise. I would. Say, this is what I want to throw out because I'm not sure myself. Is this a Hangover movie? I think yeah, it is. Yeah, this you're is right. definitely. Yeah, yeah right? that's where because it's it's long. You're, you're spending fucking on the couch. four hours on TNT with this. That's movie. That's a good call. If you're fucking hung over as shit, throw this on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I feel like that's the only way I'm watching this again. It's TNT. Good. They don't got the tits on TNT. You gotta go over to Cinemax <laughs> for that. He's got a point. You might want to get the full cut. <laughs> <laughs> you want to pay for the premium package? Craig T. Nelson's full cut. Jeez, <laughs> uh, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> That's The Devil's Advocate from 1997, directed by Taylor Hackford. If you want to get a hold of us, check out our website, whmpodcast.com, or find us on sideshownetwork.tv. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We're at whmpodcast. And, of course, right into the mailbag, We all hate movies at gmail.com. Thank you very much to Connor for calling in and everybody else who called in for requests for Listener Request Month. We might as well talk about what our next request month is going to be. It's a little different, yep. and I believe it's in... March. March. Uh, lottery. Uh, usually yep. when we do these things, we kind of vet them. We try and find stuff that's going to work and blah, blah, blah. What's a good call? What's not a good call? We're literally going to take all your calls and just dub them in a hat and pick them right. out. Well, there'll be a, a small amount of vetting. Like if you call on with a movie we've said we won't do right. or we... Qualifying we, calls. Exactly. Like make it calls into the that make the cut because there's so... Like there's so many calls and then there's there's so many calls that make the cut. So we're going to yeah. do a lottery of the calls that make the cut. And it's the only the fair way one. we think because there's so many people who t- take the time to call in and yeah. like, oh, there's four slots. But this time... You know, everybody's got almost an equal chance to get in. And the thing about it is you're going to know what the movies are going to be in advance because we're going to broadcast it on Periscope. Yeah, it's going to happen. Right. You'll you'll have the whole month planned out then. I think we might do this in March. Yep. So uh, I'm going to say this is probably a 98 percent chance we're going to do Cool World because everybody calls it <laughs> Cool World. <laughs> uh, so that's, you know, look forward to March next month, by the way. Kicking off the Halloween spooktacular. This was kind of a bridge to it. You got a little devil. Right, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's just a nice little pseudo wannabe horror movie leading into actual <laughs> yeah. discussions of horror movies. Uh, so clue for next week's episode. I believe uh, Frank Langella makes an appearance. Ooh. Oh, that, that could guy, be any number of things. That guy's a spooky character. I think he p- played Dracula a couple of times, maybe. So Frank Langella next week kicking off the 2015. Halloween Spooktacular here on We Hate Movies. Until then, I'm Andrew Jupin. Eric Siska. Steven Zadak. Take it easy. 